Hi and welcome to the MSC Apex work tutorial series presented by Evotech CAE Limited. This time we're looking at a jet engine case study and how the power of Apex can help us through the complete FEA process. In this, the third tutorial of the jet engine case study, we'll explore some of the solid geometry and mesh development techniques within Apex. We'll look at defeaturing solid geometry, hex and tet meshing, generative feature-based mesh controls and glue technology to connect parts. This is going to be focused on solid meshing. So there are areas within the jet engine assembly that are thick walled or thick structure which lend themselves to uh, hex meshing, tet meshing techniques. Uh, too thick for shell development. So we can see here we've got a central shaft uh, with a nozzle at each end and then a, uh, three bearing interfaces shown in red. So taking out everything except the central shaft we can uh, see the complexity of this structure. Okay. So if we go into the standard tet meshing tools we can take the defaults and tech mesh this very quickly as shown. The problem with that is that we could end up with a, a large model uh, obviously tech tens uh, need more elements and more nodes than a hex equivalent so we're going to try and chop the geometry up to make it hex meshable where we can and tech mesh any complex regions that are left over. Uh, so trying to simplify the geometry first of all so automated defeaturing tools within Apex, simple case of selecting the geometry, allowing Apex to pick or to, to highlight the features that it finds, so holes, chamfers, fillets, etc. etc. So in this case it's only found fillets in the um, in this solid and it's highlighted them uh, blue, orange and green. In fact you, the user has complete control over the dimension so you can uh, as we're going to show here, is uh, tailor the defeaturing such that we only remove the small features which are in this case less than the 4 mil radius. We want to keep everything else. So full control over uh, what, uh, uh, what type of entity and uh, what dimension level we're going to work with. So now we've got some uh, bumps, for want of a better term, left on the central shaft. They're not seen as features explicitly, so we're going to quickly uh, remove them using the push pull tool. So click on the up to checkbox which allows us to select a surface and push it up to the target surface. So again running through very quickly um, straightforward approach. So this would have been difficult in a um, legacy FE based preprocessor and probably would have required a, a CAD type operation but the direct modeling geometry engine in Apex allows us to do uh, best of both worlds, very complex geometry edits coupled with a uh, very complex model build. So now we take the solid, uh, we still have some bumps shown on the left hand screen, uh, left hand side of the, the, um, the shaft, so we're going to chop out a portion of that solid, so using the split tool and splitting with a plane, so a simple case of selecting an edge and a point and the plane is developed uh, orthogonal to the edge, as you can see here uh, you've got full control of the position of that plane once defined so you can move it normal either manually or by uh, physical uh, dimension tapped into the input box and again middle mouse button and bang we've got a split piece of geometry very very quick so over to the uh, display tree auto color and we can see the three solids that we've now generated so if we go back into meshing, into 2D meshing, which is effectively a hex mesher, we can see we still have one portion or one solid which is red, so we can't hex mesh that currently. So take that out of the view and we're going to focus our attention in terms of the hex mesher on the green um, geometry that's left. So first of all, uh, the, the, the smaller purple uh, section that we've got left here, um, hex meshing, 5 mil edge length. Uh, click apply and good quality very quick 
a pretty pretty simple example. So we're going to move on to the more complex uh, grey solid. Uh, so effectively, this is a swept um, a swept volume about an axis of revolution. So we can use the hex mesher straight off the bat, but if we want to use a surface mesh seed, we can do. Um, so we're using uh, again a five mm edge length. Just changing a couple of parameters to get uh, nice regular square elements, um, good quality. Uh, we could check for quality at this level, but we're going to go straight in with the um, 3D hex mesher again with the five mm edge length. Delete the um, the surface mesh. We don't need that anymore. And now check the quality against um, the mesh that we've developed for uh, both the grey and the purple regions. Uh, again, very quick. So we can see we've got the majority of good elements. We've got some poor elements. Uh, so what, what we've got in Apex is the ability to quickly hide or show um, entities of a specific element quality. So we're just showing the poorly shaped elements. We can, if we were to zoom in, we'd see they have a larger than uh, anticipated aspect ratio, but not a problem. Oh, we can still run with those. So putting the mesh back on uh, for all the hex regions, and then bringing the tech meshed region back into view. Okay, so you can see those um, abutments on the outer surface would make it difficult to uh, tech, me tech mesh in one hit. So we're going to go in with the standard tech mesh, sorry, hex mesh in one hit. So we're going to go back in with the standard tech mesh algorithm. Again, 5mm element edge length, reasonable job in terms of element quality, a um, couple of, uh, well, a number of poor and bad shaped elements, especially in the fillets. Uh, especially, uh, well, also, if, if we did want those fillets to be. Uh, or if they were regions of interest then we want better control so the solid mesh algorithm has the ability to control what we call the features based on fillets, chamfers, cylinders, washers etc etc so we've got a number of feature mesh settings which allows complete control over each one of those types of entity so firstly a fillet um, so we've got uh, broken up into two bits so we've got fillets less than 20 mil rad or greater than 20 mil rad uh, and then we've got different controls for how we uh, work with those fillets. Similarly with cylinders, so there's a bore through the centre of this solid, so we're setting um, the element edge length, uh, the number of entities around the um, circumference, and also washers, uh, which can be a useful tool with a, with a 3D mesh, especially if we've got bearing contact and stuff like that. So again, we've got uh, circumference controls, uh, the width of the washer, uh, number of washers, uh, the layer uh, ratio as it were, the number of washers uh, around a given hole. So go back into the solid mesh or tech mesh algorithm, we've got feature mesh settings turned on, press go and you can see that we now have much better controls in the fillets, certainly the fillets uh, less than 20 mil rad as controlled by the feature mesh settings. We've got much better controls around the um, the washer and the cylinder uh, within the um, the board hole of the solid. So putting the solid back on, we can check the element quality. And again, we're going to we're about to get real time feedback in terms of element quality and any modifications we make we make to the mesh. So leaving the mesh on the structure, we're simply going to suppress some of the edges which are causing the poor quality elements. So real time feedback. So modification to the geometry. Genera is generated through to the mesh, is generated through to the um, element quality display. Um, we've still got some poorly shaped elements at the top, so we're going to seed the solid edges, and again, solid geometry, fed through to mesh, fed through to element quality. Almost real time, well, pretty pretty much real time feedback in terms of uh, the, the influence that that has on the, the underlying mesh. Again, practically absolutely not impossible with legacy tools but very very laborious with legacy tools so Apex just gives us another set of features which are uh, for want of a better term incredible in terms of the speed um, increases we can see in terms of model build okay so some of the local controls we can de-feature geometry with the mesh on the structure or on the geometry as it were so simply de-feature uh, de Select one of the fillets, middle bias button to apply, and the fillet is gone. And we're done with that very quick. So, central shaft, all meshed. 
uh, nice good quality hex where possible and nice good quality hex where uh, sorry tet where hex is not possible so one of the standard techniques within apex is to use the concept of gluing which uh, under the bonnet is effectively uh, a series of explicit MPC equations to to control um, load transfer across an interface but in terms of the the apex um, user interface we see the glue acting on the adjacent faces of the two solid or rather the three solids that we've picked so the solid pairs are highlighted as glued together um, so that the meshes were not congruent but it doesn't matter we just glued them together and we've got a good elastic boundary across the interface. So with the central shaft finished, uh, there are a couple more bits that lend themselves to solid mesh definition. Uh, we've got the nozzle at the front and the sort of trailing nozzle at the back as well. So taking uh, the central shaft out of view. So if we look, these are fairly prismatic uh, type structures, but for speed, we're not gonna chop them up. We're gonna go straight in with the, the tech mesh algorithm a uh, quick 10mm uh, edge length apologies 12.5mm edge length on, on this one uh, show the element quality and reasonable well we've only got one element through the thickness uh, it depends whether this is actually uh, used as a mass representation or is actually a, a region of interest uh, but if we want to update the mesh we don't have to go through the forms we can double click on the mesh entity within the apex tree and the mesh is updated uh, and equally the the quality um, parameters stay live on screen so we, we get a real-time feedback in terms of what the what the mesh edits have, have done so computation uh, sorry not computational parts um, analysis readiness we now want to run a quick check to see whether this structure is uh, valid from the subassembly perspective so in apex there are many different types of fasteners uh, springs dampers spring dampers bushes, rigid body elements and flexible body elements. In Nastran speak the bulk of these entity types are made up of C bar, C beam, C bush coupled with RBE3, RBE2 type uh, MPC uh, definitions. So what we're going to do now is tie the each one of the blue entities back to the central shaft to tie it into one piece of subassembly structure and then run the analysis readiness check on that piece of structure. So what we're doing here, we're going to define a rigid link between entities but in terms of the connectivity at a given entity face, so in this case the, the solid entity, uh, solid entity face I should say, we want to have a compliant connection. So we pick the face, we pick the position where the uh, rigid link is going to be connected at one end. We go over to the other end of the, the structure, so the, the um, uh, central shaft again. So pick the face, middle mouse to accept, pick the position where the, uh, the link is going to be attached to, and again live feedback in terms of nodal connectivity, middle mouse button, and the connection is made very, very quick. No remeshing, no form back and forth, no uh, icon. Uh, searching all done from a very simple form and uh, acceptance from middle mouse click in terms of the uh, completing the process so again picking the face picking the point where the connection is going to happen for the first um, surface in the pair spin the model round pick the second face accept pick the point where the connection is going to be attached middle mouse button to accept and again uh, we have those defined so effectively we have RB3 definitions on the faces with an RB2 definition connecting them together so we run the um, in this case normal modes uh, free free analysis mode 7 first flexible body mode everything's tied together we're good to go uh, the bearing interfaces which we looked at at the beginning uh, again, simple prismatic structure, so they can be hex meshed with no edit whatsoever. Uh, quick quality check update. Uh, we do have some uh, poor quality elements in the, the middle piece of geometry. Perhaps we could have put a surface seed on the on the face, but we're not too concerned. So when we bring those solids back into the 
full assembly, we can now see the uh, the shell mesh we developed before, along with the solids we solids we've just developed for this case study. Okay, and thanks for watching. Please look out for further tutorials on this case study and other topics. Alternatively, you can visit evotechcae.com for specialist knowledge on MSC Apex and how it can be used to help with your FEA process.